the human brain, an infinitely complex web of cellular connections choreographing an intricate dance of chemical and electrical signals that shape and are shaped by our conscious experience, mind from matter. If that sounds philosophical to you, well, it is. But for the millions who suffer from depression, it is also the foundation of a revolutionary new science combining medicine, brain-computer interfaces, machine learning, and Kafwi Jarasa's unshakable resolve to find a cure. Like all of us, I'm a huge fan of Marvel movies. Um, I am a huge fan of Kung Fu, mo Kung Fu movies, which I, I grew up off of. I watch a lot of science fiction movies now. And were Jarasa's career a movie, the opening act would have its own sci-fi twist. University of Maryland Baltimore County engineering undergraduate Kafwi Jarasa quits a future in the fuel industry to search for a new purpose. He reads about a monkey trained to control a robotic arm through a machine that reads its thoughts. The sun comes out. This groundbreaking true-to-life research undertaken at Duke University in 1998 introduced Jarasa to brain-machine interfaces, whereby computers interact electrically with neurons. I just wanted to be an engineer and make body parts and hook them up to the brain and cure everybody who was paralyzed. Following this new dream, Jarasa became the first African-American student to receive a PhD in neurobiology from Duke before he continued on to earn an MD-PhD in psychiatry. Ultimately, Jarasa's dream would evolve after a close experience with two patients suffering from severe depression, one with insomnia and weight loss, the other sleeping excessively and gaining weight. I never forget um, how disjoint that was for me as an engineer because they had no overlapping symptoms whatsoever and yet we diagnosed it at the same illness. Jarasa viewed the problem electrically, guessing that different electrical problems in the brain will each result in depression, just as hearing different minor chords on the piano can evoke a similar emotional response. It would explain why treatment with current medications can take months of trial and error. Jarasa wondered whether a brain-machine interface could do better. And I had this idea that instead of creating these neuroprosthetic devices to fix arm movements, I could create prosthetic devices that would target the mind and the soul. Jarasa got to work making science fiction reality. His neural interfaces record the brain's electrical signals over time, while other techniques simultaneously monitor behavior. His machine learning programs then pour over the mountains of data, identifying neural circuitry associated with symptoms. The work paves the way for a future in which brain-computer interfaces pinpoint a patient's depressive neural circuits in real time. Quick, life-saving relief could then come from designer drugs delivered directly to the problem areas. Jarasa also envisions treatments that target and restore healthy electrical signals using pulses of infrared light that pass harmlessly through the skull. In the end, Jarasa's work goes beyond depression, cutting straight to the heart of what it means to be human. How does the brain work and what is a thought, <laughs> right? We, we wrestle with all of these deep questions about like, what does consciousness mean if our, our thoughts are summed up by electricity? And what does it mean about the consciousness of other things that create and process electricity? I think beginning to answer those questions will unlock a lot about what it means to be human, but also give rise to potential new understandings and treatments for psychiatric disorders.